Jonathan here again. I'm here back at St. Mary's and uh, enjoying another beautiful fall day out here. I want to continue my series that we've been talking about, Holy Orders. And we know that there are three grades or three degrees of Holy Orders. We have the diaconate, the priesthood, and the episcopacy, or bishops. Uh, uh, each of these degrees uh, participate in Holy Orders but they're kind of amplifications of the orders, uh, stepping stones in a way, uh, as they get bigger and bigger. And uh, we talked about the deacon as Christ the servant, uh, the priest as Christ the head and spouse of the church. And now we're gonna talk about uh, the fullness of the priesthood, which is uh, the episcopacy or bishops. Uh, I keep using this word episcopacy, which we probably don't hear very often, but it comes from the Greek word we see in the New Testament, uh, episkopoi, which literally means overseers. And, uh, that's, and bishops are kind of like the overseers. They are the ones who are overseeing the whole church and guarding its flock. Uh, bishops are really the true shepherds uh, of the church. Uh, and wherever there's the, the bishop, there is the Catholic Church. Uh, the bishop, uh, even though he uh, is a bishop, he also is a deacon, and he also is a priest. Uh, he actually has the fullness of the priesthood. Um, and so wherever the bishop is, we have all three degrees or grades of holy orders. Um, bishops uh, are typically uh, a bishop or the, he oversees a particular diocese. There are some bishops who are in Rome who oversee certain offices, um, but for the most part, bishops in our world, they oversee a diocese which extend beyond a city. So for example, here in Schwanksville, we're part of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Now, we're pretty far away from the city of Philadelphia, aren't we? Uh, I always make the mistake as a seminarian because I'm not from here, I think that I go since I go to seminary in Philadelphia, that whatever parish I go to, I'm in Philadelphia. Even though I'm only in the archdiocese and I could be an hour away from the city, I always just think Philadelphia. Uh, but that's not true. But you're still in the archdiocese of Philadelphia. And so the Archbishop of Philadelphia oversees the entire archdiocese, which extends through all these counties that the archdiocese encompasses. Uh, and we see these in, in other places as well. Uh, throughout the world. Uh, the Archdiocese is unique in the sense that um, it's an Archdiocese. And there are, we often hear that there's Archdiocese and Dioceses. Um, the Archdiocese is usually just a larger uh, diocese, and it in a way has uh, smaller dioceses that are attached to it, that uh, just really through uh, governance, and um, it's, it doesn't mean it's more important in, in necessarily um, but the archbishop of that archdiocese, uh, a lot, sometimes uh, different cases for canon law come through him and, and things like that. So um, an archdiocese, that's just what an archdiocese is, an archbishop. Uh, especially, so the, especially for an archbishop, there's a special connection with him and Rome. Uh, every year on the Feast of St. Agnes, which is in January, lambs are blessed. Agnes means lamb, right? On you stay, as we sing, uh, Lamb of God. Uh, St. Agnes, uh, and there's a connection with lambs there. And so these lambs are blessed. And on the feast day of St. Peter and Paul in June, uh, these uh, lambs, the, the wolf and the lambs, is taken and made into what's called a pallium, which is this strip of white cloth uh, that is then sewn and is uh, placed on around the shoulders of the, an archbishop, and he receives this on the feast day of St. Peter and Paul. And so there's a great connection there with the church in Rome, whose patron saints is Peter and Paul, and an archbishop. Uh, as I said in a previous video on the priesthood, that priests and deacons, uh, their ministry is to assist the bishop. The bishop is the, the primary pastor of the diocese. Uh, and so they work in conjunction with the bishop. That's why the bishop he, or the priest takes, makes promises to, and the deacon makes promises 
to the bishop at their ordination. When the deacon or a priest kneels before the bishop, he promises respect and obedience to the bishop. And the bishop, he's in a unique position in that he's not just at one parish uh, or two parishes, he sees the entire diocese, into all the needs of his church, and he knows where uh, the need is for the different gifts that different priests have. So sometimes we get frustrated when our favorite priest is transferred to a different parish and we don't understand why, but the bishop in his wisdom uh, and his ability to see the whole church that he's overseeing is able to say, uh, this priest has done a wonderful job with, with this particular mission at this parish, and I need him at a different parish to build that parish up as well. Uh, so he, it's difficult for that priest oftentimes to be able to have to leave something that he loves, but out of respect and obedience to his bishop uh, and out of his mission to the church, uh, will obediently go and, um, and fulfill that mission. Bishops, as we know, we see uh, they look a little bit different than priests do, right? Especially when they come to our parish. Uh, some of their vestments are a little bit different. They still wear uh, the chasuble, like a priest does, the uh, outer garment. Uh, but the bishop has two, or th well, and more than two things. For one thing, the bishop wears a special ring. Uh, only bishops wear rings, and it denotes his spousal relationship to the church. The bishop also wears what's called a pectoral cross around his neck. Uh, pectoral is meaning like your chest, and so because often he'll fit it into his uh, his pocket, into his shirt, against his heart, um, and uh, you sometimes you'll just see a chain going across the bishop's chest if he has his his suit jacket on. Uh, but a bishop also, when he celebrates mass, will oftentimes wear what's called a zucchetto, which is that uh, kind of that pinkish purple cap he wears on top of his head uh, when he celebrates mass. Uh, it comes from the word for gourd. Uh, just kind of half of a gourd sits on top of his head. Uh, and then on top of that, he'll wear what's called the mitre. And that's the mitre. That's the big fancy hat that he wears that all bishops wear. Uh, and he carries around his staff, which is called a crozier. The crozier. So we have the mitre and the crozier, are the two uh, things that, that most people identify bishops with. Uh, and these are signs of his authority, signs of him uh, being the chief shepherd of his flock. All of us are a part of his flock, uh, and so uh, he has this crozier there as the shepherd to help guide us gently and patiently. It's really beautiful at the ordination of a bishop uh, as he um, goes into the cathedral. There's requirements that, unlike um, at a priesthood ordination, uh, where a bishop calls uh, men forward to be ordained priest. Uh, the only person who can call a bishop to be a bishop is the Pope. And it's the Pope who makes that appointment. And there's a whole lengthy process that goes into that of uh, different lists that bishops submit uh, to the nuncio, the um, ambassador to a country. Uh, and he's his rep the Pope's representative in that country. And the nuncio is the one who presents uh, a list to the Holy Father to make recommendations on who would make a good bishop uh, back in a different diocese in the United States. So once the Pope names uh, a bishop, uh, he is then ordained a bishop, and there's a requirement traditionally that there are three bishops who ordain him. There's the main uh, um, consecrator, but then he has two co-consecrators, two other bishops uh, who assist in, in ordaining uh, this bishop. And all three of them lay hands on, on this man, just like uh, in a diaconate or a priesthood ordination. And uh, there's also the, the act of prostration, which he lays flat on the floor of the cathedral. And the litany of the saints is sung, asking the saints' intercession to pray for this man as he's preparing for, to be ordained a bishop. Uh, additionally, uh, after the prayer of ordination, just like the, which is essential for both, for all of the uh, ordination sacraments, um, the, uh, with a priest, chrism is poured on the hands of a priest, just like we received it at baptism on our crown of our head, at confirmation on our forehead, the priest receives it on his hands. The bishop 
is uh, uh, anointed with chrism uh, is poured on his head, actually. Uh, and he sometimes will have to wear uh, some sort of cloth around his neck so that the, as the oil is dripping off his head, it doesn't go onto his vestments. Um, and uh, we see this, uh, especially in the Old Testament, where, as King David was anointed king, uh, the prophet came and he poured oil on top of his head, anointing him as a king. And so uh, the bishop, too, is anointed on his head with this chrism. Um, and uh, it's really just a beautiful uh, ordination ceremony that, that you know we don't really see very often because we see diaconate and priesthood ordinations every year, but it's not too often when we see the ordination of a bishop. And because a bishop is a deacon and a priest, sometimes on special occasions, uh, such as an ordination, uh, the bishop will also wear a dalmatic underneath his chasuble, signifying that he too is a bishop, or too, he too is a deacon. Um, and so that brings me to the, the sacraments that the bishop does. The sacrament, the the sacraments that a bishop can perform are all seven of the sacraments. He can baptize, he obviously confirms, uh, he can celebrate the mass, uh, he hears confessions, he anoints the sick, he witnesses marriages, and he ordains men to the diaconate and to the priesthood. And when he's called upon, he can ordain uh, a man to the episcopacy. Uh, the bishop is the ordinary minister of confirmation, so he is the one who usually goes around to the parishes to administer confirmation, uh, but in cer certain circumstances, he can delegate that to, to different priests to do confirmations. But the bishop is the ordinary minister as a representative of the church, of the community. He is the ordinary, normal minister of confirmation. Now, the sacrament that only the bishop can do is ordinations. Uh, a priest cannot ordain. A priest can confirm an emergency in certain 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 situations, uh, but a uh, only a bishop can ordain men to the diaconate and to the priesthood. Um, so that makes me think of us praying for our bishops. Every mass we hear in the Eucharistic prayer, we pray for our pope and for our bishop. So no matter where we go in the world, we're going to hear the name of the Pope, which is the same for everyone. And then it depends on where we're at with diocese that we're visiting, we hear the name of that bishop. And so always make it a point when you hear the priests say, Nelson, our bishop, uh, to actually pray for Archbishop Perez and for his ministry as the shepherd of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia and his ministry as a priest and as a deacon here as he serves all of us on all of you. Um, and pray for him and pray for all the bishops of the world who uh, guide and protect us uh, in this world and on our journey of faith, uh, leading us closer and closer to the Lord. So God bless you.